Hello guys, hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're ready for the ultimate frost at night guide for both two-handed and dual wielding. This is a starting guide for season 1. If that night changes happen I will give you guys a quick update. I honestly think you won't find any guide out there like this one. I'm gonna really explain to you everything you need to know. So first of all we're gonna talk about the talents for frost at night. On the left side there is no big change to see. I'm still using the same talents with exception of null magic. This talent has been nerfed to the ground. In PvP it only gives 4% magic damage reduction and the 35 duration of harmful magic effects against you is only 0.29% effective. Therefore it's like 11-12% to reduction only. You can of course still use this if you wish, but I personally prefer to rather use Unholy Ground to give myself 5% haste. As you know, you have 2 stacks of death and decay with 30 second cooldown and when you place it down it lasts up to 10 seconds, but with cleaving strikes we get plus 4 seconds when we leave the zone. So basically you can have 5% increased haste up to 14 seconds by casting death and decay only once. On the right side of the talent tree, no change to the talents besides that I dropped Shattered Frost to get Frost Sight. Reason for that is that Frost Sight always crits now. I still prefer this build over any other Icebreaker and Hyperpyrexia. I see people play it. I tried, I don't like it. For me it feels weak. Doesn't matter. If you dual wield or use a two-handed, this build can be used for both. Regarding PvP talents, always use Strangulate to replace Asphyxiate. We don't need one additional stun. We have Dead of Winter. A second PvP talent which always gives us a stun each 30 seconds if used and Frostworm's Fury with absolute zero if if we really need another stun. I consider Spell Warden still one of the best to help out your teammates and against casters, Bloodforged against too much physical melee or hunters, Delirium to increase the enemy's movement cooldowns like Charge, Fair Rush, Sprint, Blink and other. Basically if anybody uses these abilities they will recharge 50% slower. Now one ability that I find interesting is Bitter Chill. This reduces the enemy's haste by 8% when you cast Chain of Ice and you can hit two targets with it and you refresh it with Frost Strike. Since people don't have a lot of haste in season 1 I think this is a very good option to take. You can try this out it's very easy to use if it's difficult for you to use Spell Warden. Me personally, I'm probably gonna stick to Spell Warden and Bloodforge most of the time. Hero Talents. We're gonna go for Deathbringer and those juicy big Reaper's Mark. Now Reaper's Mark is a new ability which stacks up to 40 and explodes. Or it explodes when enemy player is below 35% health. Wave of Souls. Deals damage twice and increases Shadow Frost damage the enemy takes if both hit by 10%. Blood Fever increases chance to stack Reaper's Mark, has an impact on Embellishment proc as well. Now which one I'm gonna tell you later. Bind in Darkness makes our Holding Blast deal Shadow Frost damage. Shadow Frost damage applies 2 stacks to Reaper's Mark, crits 4 stacks. This is very important. Soul Rapture. Reaper's Mark explosion deals 20% of the damage as AoE when it explodes. Enemies hit deal 5% less physical damage to you for 10 seconds. Grim Reaper. Reaper's Mark deals up to 30% increased damage based on HP the enemy has, applies Soul Reaper to targets below 35%, Rune Card Plates. Now with this, if you keep wasting your runes and refresh them, you can get up to 5% magic and physical damage reduction. Now it's 1% pass stack. This can be easily stacked up, you can up keep this and even if you lose you will stack it up again very fast. We definitely don't want to use the death pact with only 50% effectiveness that it casts if you get hit hard. I don't, I don't like this. Now swift end or painful death? Now this is a good question and I give you an easy answer. We definitely go for painful death. Don't even consider to go for swift end because painful death this increases the chance that you reapply Reaper's Mark on the target, which gives you more exterminate hits with Obliterate. And additionally, your first Obliterate will cost no rune, and the second Obliterate will cost one rune instead of two. Now besides this, this is very important as well, because with this painful death talent, you will have a much bigger chance to reapply Reaper's Mark. 
when you hit those obliterates that give you exterminate. The first hit of course only. So keep that in mind. Now next, Dark Talons or Wither Away. Now Wither Away might give you more runic power if you put it on more people. Frost Fever is gonna probably tick faster and it's gonna give you more runic power. But after all the tests I did, I absolutely go for Dark Talons. No question asked. This is freaking beast because this makes our Frost Strike deal Shadow Frost damage. We want this combined with Bind of Darkness to stack that Reaper's Mark stacks even faster. Trust me, this is godlike. Icy Talons plus Smothering Offense plus Dark Talons is absolutely amazing for dual wielding, but it's pretty good even for two-handed. I will definitely use this even as two-handed build. That's Messenger or Expelling Shield. I definitely choose that Messenger for the 30 second cooldown reduction on Lichborn. We have Unholy Endurance, therefore a 1.5 minute Lichborn that reduces damage taken by 15% for 12 seconds, makes you immune to Charm, Fear Sleep and gives you 6% Leech. There's absolutely nothing to think about, you have to take this. You can use this before Icebound Fortitude and keep that Icebound Fortitude. If you're really facing somebody who has stuns and that you are scared that a rogue is gonna stun you and later you have no trinket, so this is perfect. We can use Lichborn multiple times while Icebound has a two minute cooldown. Now exterminate, you already know what it does. When the mark explodes, your next two obliterates are empowered. The first sight can apply the Reaper's mark. Now let's talk about stat priority. So stat priority is mastery, then verse, haste and crit. For me the priority is to get a good amount of haste. I prefer that you get 15 to 20%. I personally will go for 20% to get that global cooldown I like around 1.23 plus minus. You know that haste additionally makes your runes regenerate faster. Versatility you should get at least 20%. If you do die a lot you can increase this but don't forget you get already some damage reduction from some talents. So I would rather focus more on mastery as you see we have around 40% plus. Now crit chance is actually not terrible neither. We have a bit. Why? Well your out attack crits give you killing machine and I see death torrent. Now baseline you have 6% with bone grinder you get up to 5%. I would aim to have 9 to 10% crit chance without bone grinder. Possible that I will get the two tier set. Now I don't really want to talk about gearing right now or rather on the beta server there is no PvP tier set to test. So if we will have a catalyst to change PvP gear to get the tier set bonuses, I think two set bonus is enough. The four set bonus is nerfed by 50% in PvP so you get only 5% strength. You just have to gear that way that you get the stats that I already told you. The rest, wrist, boots, back, you can go speed enchants, chest full strength, crystalline radiance enchant or there is another enchant that gives you strength and stamina. Ring enchants and while crafting neck and ring as I said before get what you need to balance the stats out. Have around 20% haste. 20% worse at least and the rest goes to mastery you can even put a little in crit chance you can maybe use the tier set pvp once if we get them runes a rune of the fallen crusader on the weapon for two-handed for dual wielding you can use on the main hand razor eyes and fallen crusader on the off hand now crafting items first of all they are three level below conquest pvp gear so 636 eye level you should uh, get this embellishment twice elemental focusing lens it procs on dots damage done if you have too much verse, I prefer to craft neck and ring with haste mastery and if you lack verse, you can just get mastery verse sockets or verse enchants to balance out the stats. I will probably do so. Macros, here are all my macros I use. I explained these in my guide for pre-patch already. The new macro I have is for the reaper's mark since Pillar of Frost has no cooldown. Now guys, we have new gems. Or PvP and PvE, they are like meta gems because you can socket only one of them, and we are gonna use 
only this one because this one gives us 5% damage reduction when we are CC'd, so stunned or whatever, for 6 seconds. Trust me, this is the best one. There's another one that makes your next auto attack deal some damage, but I honestly think that this one is the best. Now, how to burst? Well, try to get enemies close together, grip blind, that decay remorseless winter chill streak and then or use abomination limb and then the ultimate burst macro reaper's mark pillar of frost with empower rune weapon or we don't abomination limb just burst immediately priority is to get killing machines with frost strike and just spam obliterate you can use rhyme as well to get killing machine all of these abilities help to stack that reaper's mark fast to explode it I think I talked enough, I can play arena, I lag on the beta. Now for the end I'm just gonna say there is no big difference between dual wielding or two handed but it feels like one handed has much more procs because of two one handed weapons and faster auto attacks. It has that sustained damage but I feel like two handed has the bigger burst kill potential. Now I did a lot of testing and this is my conclusion. I will probably play two handed. Hope this guide helps you to get started in season 1, I will give quick updates on the start of my PvP videos if anything changes in the meantime. See you guys in season 1. Beneath the ice and snow, a legend awakens. I am Arthas, the Lich King ruler of the damned master of Frostmoor.